Ludwig Blum was born in 1891 in Lieschen near Brno, Bohemia. The son of the only Jewish family in the small Czech village, he was the seventh of ten children. His parents owned the only store in the village. He had a strong sense of Jewish nationalism and identified with the Zionist movement at a very early age through his activities in the Maccabi sports movement. He was an outstanding athlete and remained one all his life. His great ability as an artist was revealed when he was still a child. At the age of 18, Ludwig Blum went to Vienna, where he studied at the Royal Academy with the well-known painter David Korn. This is a painting of a bust of Socrates, made at the age of 12. And here is a portrait of a classmate, painted when he was 14. This portrait of a peasant was painted when he was home once on holiday. Compulsory military service in the Austrian army in the First World War interrupted his studies for five years. At the end of the war, he was accepted at the Meisterschule in Prague and graduated with distinction. He immediately set out on a tour of the great art centers of Europe, including Paris and Amsterdam. In 1923, he realized his dream of coming to Eretz Israel. He came to Jerusalem, and Jerusalem remained his home as long as he lived. He never ceased to be fascinated by the strong light, the changing colors, the landscapes, the colorful inhabitants of Jerusalem, the romance of the East. He loved to paint the desert of Judea in all seasons, in the late hours of the afternoon, the sun at his back. In 1936, he was commissioned to paint a monumental panorama of Jerusalem, eight meters long, for the Museum of the Capuchin Order in Brno. This is the original picture which he painted from the Mount of Olives, and from which he later executed the large landscape, which aroused a great deal of interest in this country before it was sent to Czechoslovakia. Ludwig Blum traveled throughout the Near East with his journalist friend von Weisel, and with pencil, aquarel, and oil, rendered his impressions of his travels. The Nile, Luxor, 1931. Iraq, Persia, the tomb of Mordechai, Palmyra, Tehran. A view of Jaffa Gate, 1924. And today. Ludwig Blum was a master portrait painter. His daughter, Dvorah Hermon, talks about him and the family. Father loved to paint portraits. This picture was painted at the request of my mother. For each one of her birthdays, she was given a portrait of a member 
of the family. My mother, Dina Meyer Bloom, came to Eretz Israel from Germany before the First World War. She directed the first Hebrew kindergarten teacher seminar in Jerusalem and the first modern Hebrew kindergarten in the old city. After her marriage, she gave up her profession to look after her two children and to assist my father. Sir Flinders Petrie, the famous archaeologist who spent his last years in Jerusalem, was a welcome guest in my father's studio. My brother Eli, when he finished high school, he volunteered for the Palmach. He was killed at the age of 20 on June 46 while blowing up the railway bridge at Achziv. With the death of my brother in the preliminary struggle for the state was for my father the beginning of the War of Independence. You will hear about this period from my husband, Shalom Hermon. My father-in-law never freed himself from the sorrow of the death of his son Eliyahu. All during the War of Independence, he traveled around the various fighting zones, painting, above all, the different types of young soldiers, as if seeking in them the image of his son, the Palmachnik. the barrier on Jaffa Street on the day we captured Bevingrad. This was the name we gave to the fortified British headquarters. The gallows at the Jerusalem prison after it was taken from the British. The sniper at the Fast Hotel. A view from the Fast Hotel, one of the outposts opposite the walls of the old city. A guard at Tanus House, a strong point overlooking no man's land. Types of fighters drawn during battle, when my father-in-law himself kept watch at defense posts on the borders of besieged Jerusalem, fulfilling his duties in Mishmar Ha'am, the citizens organization for national defense. Mount Castle, the strong point on the way to Jerusalem. The Palmach at Beersheba. <laughs> Nahum Sarig, commander of the Negev Brigade. Negba, the kibbutz in the south, whose heroic resistance stopped the Egyptian advance. Leonard Bernstein, directing the Philharmonic Orchestra at Beersheba a short time after it was conquered. Chedva with her accordion. Father always saw the human side of the war.
women of the National Guard of besieged Jerusalem preparing sandwiches for the soldiers. The opening session of the Knesset, the first Jewish parliament. The war of independence had been won. Father continued to stroll around Jerusalem, but was now cut off from his beloved old city. His young friend, the artist Yossi Stern, will now speak of him. I really got to know Ludwig Blum after the War of Liberation. I used to meet him as he wandered about the markets or in no man's land, observing, studying, sketching. And he always had time for a good word and good friendly advice for the young artist. Every encounter with him was an opportunity to learn something about how to be an artist and how to be a human being. He was the peacemaker among the artists of Jerusalem, for we all respected him. And up until today, I can remember every word of advice, good advice, he gave me. Ludwig Blum haser lekulanu, chiyucho hatov, v'yigishato ha'enoshi hachama le'omanut ve'le'omanim. In 1953, an American Quaker commissioned a large painting of the Last Supper. Here are the first sketches. Ludwig Blum endeavored to recreate in the picture the atmosphere of the time. For the background, he chose the Cenaculum on Mount Zion, where, according to Christian tradition, the Last Supper took place. And he put Jesus at the head of the table, according to Jewish custom. The models for his apostles he found among the different Oriental Jewish communities in Jerusalem. The glass vessels on the table are glasses actually used in Jerusalem during that period and are now preserved in the Rockefeller Museum. Bloom painted throughout the whole of Israel, from Tel Chai in the north to Eilat in the south. Tel Chai, 1943. Street scene in Nazareth. Safford with the Sea of Galilee below. Tiberius. Haifa and the Bay. Dizengoff Circle, Tel Aviv, 1956. A far cry from the scene today. The seashore at Ashkelon. Storm on the Dead Sea, the lowest spot on earth. Mount Solomon and the Bay of Elat. Bloom exhibited his works in Israel and abroad. His first exhibitions in Europe in the 20s aroused great interest among art lovers and art critics. His exhibition in London in 1933 was opened by Lord Allenby 
in the presence of Jan Masarek. In 1938, his Jerusalem panorama was exhibited at the Royal Academy in London and was highly praised by the art critic Sir Wyndham Lewis. The beginning of the 50s saw him in the United States, where he exhibited in New York and Philadelphia. His last trip abroad was to Paris in 1960. At the opening of the exhibition in Paris with his old friend, the artist Maxa Nordau. The most impressive of the many exhibitions he held in Israel was the Jubilee exhibition when he was 80 years old under the auspices of a public committee headed by the Municipality of Jerusalem. The exhibition was opened by Yigal Alon, then Minister of Education. Among the many admirers of Ludwig Blum, Teddy Kolek, Mayor of Jerusalem. For me, Ludwig Blum has always been associated with Jerusalem. Even before I met him, I knew his great painting, the Panorama of Jerusalem. I know of no more beautiful painting of the city. We came from the same background, Austria and Czechoslovakia, and in spite of our difference in age, we had many jokes in common about the Kaiser and the Austrian army in which Blum served. When I was responsible for tourism for the government, I commissioned a poster of Jerusalem, which was sent all over the world and brought much pride to the city and is still popular even today. Look at the difference in Jerusalem from the time when Blum painted the big panorama, when he made this poster and united Jerusalem today, and when the city council created the award of Yakir Yerushalayim, beloved of Jerusalem if you will, Ludwig Blum was one of the first to receive this award. Ludwig Blum passed away on Tisha B'Av 1974 and was buried in Jerusalem. His grave overlooks the view he so much loved to paint. The many paintings he left behind him bear witness to the great love he felt for his country and his city, Jerusalem. Thank you.